Bienvenue to Time for our international press review in the papers today with Chris Moore. Chris, um, Radovan Karadzic, I imagine, dominating the press. All over the front page around the world still, especially after these uh, images of this extraordinary uh, bearded character coming out. Let's it's start remarkable, here. isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> it's a, a bit like the, the Saddam Hussein story. It's a comparison that a lot of people have been making. Uh, let's start off in the, the Liberation, the French paper. Now, they have some voices from uh, Karadzic's past uh, speaking out there. Uh, some people who live in uh, remote mountainous regions recording a figure dressed in a monk's cowl. Uh, wandering the mountains and enjoying the hospitality in local monetries, a figure which they now think so was uh, So there's some kind of truth in the, the Paddy Ashdown, Lord Ashdown, the former you know, high, UN high representative of Bosnia, saying that the Orthodox Church was sheltering him. So there's some kind of truth in that? I uh, don't know whether we can say it was the Orthodox Church, monasteries definitely. Uh, that's what these, okay. uh, these witnesses are saying. Anyway, uh, the Australian, they have uh, an account from a man called Vito Zepinic. Now, he was head of uh, police and secret services in Bosnia in 1991-92. And as such, he tapped Karadzic's telephone all of which he says is going to give the International Criminal Court ample evidence of uh, Karadzic talking about ethnic cleansing, stirring up racial hatred and apparently ordering the police not to intervene uh, in the uh, sort of a growing, growing the unstable environment that was happening in Bosnia prior to Sarajevo, Srebrenica, etc. So Karadzic fighting extradition to the tribunal, as you'd expect, I suppose. What's next? Uh, Obama, the uh, Barack Obama roadshow, is rolling into uh, Jerusalem now, this is and interesting, uh, isn't it? the Palestinian territories today. Shark al orsat the uh, London-based Arabic paper, they're pretty optimistic about it, really, saying that they hope that uh, Obama win would uh, would give a boost to Israel-Palestine negotiations. Also optimistic is uh, the Jerusalem Post, the Israeli paper. They say it's a boost for the uh, U.S.-Israeli friendship. And they're also encouraged by um, Obama's apparently hardening uh, tone on Iran. Obama, of course, saying he'd be prepared to uh, keep the military option on the table. Jerusalem Post are also amused by the uh, media circus that's following Obama. Some 450 journalists with him, three news anchors. Uh, a lot of major US networks going to be newscasting from Jerusalem, all of which says the Jerusalem Post has left uh, poor old John McCain feeling a little bit out in the cold. Yes, the chips are down for McCain, you would let's, think. Let's have a look in the Guardian as well, because of course uh, Obama's due in uh, London this weekend. Now they say that David Cameron, the Conservative leader, and Prime Minister Gordon Brown, they're going to be keeping a low profile, not wanting to be seen to be uh, backing either candidate in the US context. But Obama, they say, will be making a beeline for uh, former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair to get his photo taken with him. Blair, obviously, is uh, still pretty popular in the United States. Indeed. OK, what's next? Uh, Zimbabwe and Australia. This is a story which broke in Australia yesterday and has been all over the press there uh, since. The Age is the newspaper. It gives us details of uh, flights from Zimbabwe to China flying through uh, Australian uh, airspace. Now, on board are apparently uh, Robert Mugabe's cronies enjoying junkets uh, to China. Uh, the plane often laden apparently with ivory, gold and diamonds to be exchanged for uh, weapons and luxury goods for Mugabe's palace. And uh, there's a growing uh, 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 sort of uh, flurry of calls in Australia for uh, the government there to follow the Canadian government's line and uh, ban Zimbabwe registered planes from the country's airspace. It's kind of circuitous route if you think about it, flying to Australia then flying it is, up. Yep. You know, and uh, some accounts, but a bit, of a, a bit of a party up in those planes apparently, a lot of smoking going on. <laughs> Carry on, sir. Finally, uh, your from, from smoking to drinking, uh, they often say that the British are a nation of shopkeepers. This is probably <laughs> not what they had in mind. In The Independent, this is the story of British Army uh, Finance Sergeant Mark McKay, deployed to Iraq, set up his own uh, retail facility out there, uh, allegedly buying cases of beer for uh, £10 and selling them on to uh, coalition troops for £37 to £50. And apparently in the space of uh, 12 weeks, uh, he made no less than £200,000 in profit and was busted when £100,000 in cash was found in plant pots at his home. absolutely phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal... Uh business acumen you know in another age he might have been given an award not for that, perhaps the best place to do it but indeed you chris thank you for that uh, entertaining uh, review of uh, what's in the papers all around the world you're watching france van cat stay with us